There are some authors that once you start reading them, you just can't stop. It's like a drug. You are hooked. You are addicted. Give me more. Which of those authors do I think are the top 10 most addictive? Does Stephen King make the list super prolific and successful that he is? Let's find out. Hi, I'm Jim, the father of this father-son duo who does Fantasy for the Ages, a show where we talk about fantasy, science fiction, and other nerdy things that we enjoy. This is a Just Jim episode today, where I'm bringing a quick take episode on these, what I think are the top 10 most addictive authors out there in science fiction and fantasy. They may not all be authors that I'm in love with, but when I look at what's out there and I look at what people say, they seem to be the ones people go gaga for. They are crazy about. And anything these people write, people suck it up and say, give me more. So, you know, this is an unscientific list, but I've got a top 10 that just really seem to be whatever they put out there, people are going to pay them for it. More, 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 and no one's gotten tired. In fact, some are frustrated that there aren't more from these people yet. Let's get to the list. Number 10, working my way up from the bottom, is Mark Tufo. Okay, this is a zombie apocalyptic and sci-fi author who's just writing all sorts of books. And I love Mark Tufo. You can find a bunch of episodes on his things here. His flagship series is the Zombie Fallout series. Yes, zombie apocalypse, but also just a lot of laughs. But laughs done in a serious way. You gotta read it to know what I'm talking about. But he's got a whole bunch of parallel series with it. Um, the Book of Riley, Lycan Fallout, Demon Fallout. He goes sci-fi with Indian Hill. He's got a number of other series that I'm not going to mention by name, but are all kind of tied into Zombie Fallout in some creative ways. Then a few random other things he's written. Even a series for kids. And many collaborations with other authors out there in the dystopian, apocalyptic, zombie genre. And he keeps writing these, and people keep buying them, like me. It's hard to stop reading Mark Tufo. I see his name on something, I go for it, and I'm not the only one alone. Number nine, Naomi Novik. This is one I haven't read yet, but she's on my TBR with everything she's written because everything I've heard about it sounds spectacular. She's racked up a whole bunch of awards and nominations for other awards. Things like originally her nine-book Temeraire series, which was alternate history set in the Napoleonic War era. Then the standalone fantasy novels Uprooted and Spinning Silver, which I think was actually a novella. And then most recently, her Scalamance trilogy. Again, fantasy. And this is all kind of in my wheelhouse. I think her tone, her style might not be what I typically go for, but the quality's got to be up there because people rave about Novik. And so, yeah, anything else she puts out, it's going to be a bestseller. People are addicted to her style. Number eight, Andy Weir. And this one I am totally addicted to. This is the sci-fi author of The Martian, Artemis, Project Hail Mary, and a bunch of random other works, short stories, novellas. He doesn't have more novels out there yet, and we need more. Honestly, I haven't read Artemis yet. It's on my TBR, but I got the first one, The Martian. It was amazing. And Project Hail Mary, his more recent one, which was also amazing. I know I'll love Artemis as well, but I've still got to squeeze that one in. But if I see Andy Weir's name on something, it's going on the TBR. I want more of his science fiction that he makes so engaging, not boring, but with real hard science. That's not easy to do since so many people fail. Number seven, George R.R. R. Martin. Okay, dude, he's got a whole bunch of stuff he wrote years ago, and then finally he stumbled into this book called A Game of Thrones. And since he started... The A Song of Ice and Fire. You can't write enough of this stuff. People crave these books. Grimdark, a gritty world of fantasy and dragons. and uh, Just stuff that's going on out there is amazing. Of course, wonderfully adapted for HBO. I mean, the ending of <laughs> Game of Thrones, we could still get into a debate about. But the books, man, people want the books. 
They're waiting for him to finish the flagship series of Song Ice and Fire. This is supposed to be two more books. Will we ever get them? We don't know. But he keeps writing other stories in the same world, and they sell like hotcakes. So George R. R. Martin, yeah, he's like crack for Grim Dark. We need more, more. Number six, Jim Butcher. This is the author of The Dresden Files, which sets the bar for urban fantasy. Still being written, 17 books strong. Codex Alera is where he dove in and did epic fantasy, six book series. Very good. Not as good as Dresden Files, but still quite good for epic fantasy. And he's got the Cinderspire series that he's actively writing two books out. Uh, the most recent was just last year. This is a steampunk fantasy. He kind of keeps thinking, so what other genre should I try something in? And everything he writes sells well. People are entertained. I know the Dresden Files is a little contentious for some of you. The style just doesn't hit. But when I read these books, I laugh more than anything else I read. I enjoy the story. And Jim Butcher just gets my sense of humor. So if you really love our channel, I hope you love the Dresden Files. Maybe you like Zach's content more. And then you don't like the Dresden Files as much. Although it's winning him over. It is. Okay, number five, Sarah J. Moss. This is not my kind of fiction, but I look at how many books she's got out there, how successful they've sold, how really people who like that style of fantasy have nothing bad to say and just want more. Yes, more Moss. Sorry, bad joke. <laughs> Anyways, Sarah J. Moss is clearly one that people who appreciate that style of fantasy are totally addicted on. And they will pay, pay, pay to get more from her. She's raking it in. She's clearly writing good books. Keep it up. Let me know if that's your jam. And if you agree, she's addictive. Number four, Terry Pratchett. Sir Terry Pratchett, who wrote almost everything he wrote in Discworld. Over 40 books. This amazing, quirky series of fantasy books that... I haven't been able to catch on for, but the Discworld fan base is rabid. So these books clearly hit home for people. There will be no more Discworld since Terry Pratchett did pass away back in 2015. But people, when they find Discworld, and if it's their kind of thing, they will read all these books. They can't stop. It's like Pringles. You can't have just one. You keep going for more and more and more until you consume all of Discworld. Again, I got the funky blue cheese flavored Pringles. It didn't hit. I mean, I like blue cheese, but with potato chips, I don't think that would be a thing. And maybe that's how Discworld felt for me. But for a lot of people, it's up there and it gets the number four slot on my list. Number three, I'm giving kudos to another one I've not quite caught on to yet, but Robin Hobb. There's no denying that she's been able to put out a ton of books that are very successful, primarily in the fantasy realm. The biggest being the Realm of the Elderlings. Quite a lengthy series, trilogies and quadrilogies. These chunks that all kind of tie together in the same world. Robin Hobb is a pen name. Margaret Lindholm is her name. And she also has another pen name, closer to the real one, Megan Lindholm, that she has written more older works before she moved into the Realm of the Elderlings. And she still does drop the occasional short story or a little novella under either of these pen names. She's 71 years old, I believe, and still active, still writing. But the realm of the elderlings, that's peak Robin Hobb. And uh, I've tried the second trilogy. So I was out of order and it didn't quite click for me. I got to go back and start at the beginning. Then maybe I'll fall in love like the rest of you crackheads who can't stop raving about Robin Hobb. <laughs> but rises to number three because of how passionate these people are. Number two, Brandon Sanderson. Because, man, anybody who can break Kickstarter by saying, hey, I wrote four random books and I'm going to like offer them up. Oh, I'm not going to tell you their names. Um, I'm not going to tell you what they're about, but you want them? <laughs> and... The overwhelming response that people wanted this was literally he is a literary drug dealer. People are so hooked on Sanderson, they didn't care. I gave him my money. I wanted the books. The thing is with Sanderson, there's so much in his Cosmere. And then he's written these other things, the Cytoverse. Some people call it the Skyward series, which is science fiction. 
Alcatraz, a fantasy series aimed at kids, uh, the Legion novellas, which is more science fiction, the Reckoners, which is superhero fantasy. That was kind of fun. I enjoyed those. And then various other random works. He just keeps pumping stuff out. The Cosmere is his creme de la creme. And once you've started into it, you kind of need it all. If you enjoyed some of the Cosmere, you want the rest of it. And then you want to know, well, what else has he written? And some of you, you even found him like I did. He finished The Wheel of Time using Robert Jordan's notes to write three more excellent books to finish. This series, massive books. And after that, we were already like, uh, has this guy written anything else? Because we need more Sanderson now. Yeah, it is the definition of addiction. You must buy a Sanderson book when you hear this one coming out. I think he probably wins on pre-orders as well, as soon as they can. Here's my money. Here's my money. Keep writing. Number one on my list, and I wouldn't have said this a year ago, Steven Erickson, the writer of Malazan Book of the Fallen, which is a series I'm still reading. I'm only six books into the core series, and I've read one of the corollary novels. I'm going to move into another one soon. But I can already tell, man, this is such great epic fantasy, which is why every book in the Malazan universe went on my TBR. With this stuff being so good, anything else Erickson wrote, I want to read. Oh, this guy Ian C. Esselmont has written some too, and they're kind of connected to Erickson stuff. Yeah, okay, I'll read that too, because anything connected to Erickson stuff has to be great. Give me some, because if I run out, I'm going to start twitching. It's so good. There are a few other things I've found that Erickson has written. Uh, the Willful Child Trilogy, which is kind of a spoof on modern science fiction and an homage to the original Star Trek series at the same time. Yeah, that's going on my TBR now. And a book, Rejoice, A Knife to the Heart. I don't even know what it's about, but it's going on my TBR. Yep. I clearly have Erickson addiction. Okay, that's my top 10. Hey, I led with a teaser of Stephen King. Yeah, not in my top 10, but there are plenty of people addicted to Stephen King and he gets an honorable mention. I myself am trying to conquer him, but it's not quite the same as these other authors. It's more a marathon. I want them all. Some of them aren't very good. Most of them have a lot to offer and some of them are fantastic. But I wouldn't say I'm addicted. I'm just persistent. If you think Stephen King should have been one of these on here, let me know. That's what a comment box is for, people. Put your comments down about what I said here today. Just drop them down there. I will read and respond. While you're thinking of responding to us, that's also what that uh, like button is for. So please hit it. Hit the like button. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't done that yet. There are other things down in the show notes that show how you can communicate with Zach and I. We love engaging with the people watching our videos, especially if you want to say how right I am. But I love it when people think I'm wrong, too, and we can have a conversation. So let's talk, people. Let's do it. And if you've really enjoyed this, check out our other content, and then you might want to explore our Patreon because we have secret episodes only Patreon supporters have seen. We'd be happy to include you in there if you choose to be one of our supporters and get some of those extra benefits. All right, that's where I'll leave you today. Have fun getting addicted to some new books. Thanks for watching. Talk to you next time.